that scrutiny, uh, and you ended up making a very public statement about it, some of that scrutiny was centred around your ethnicity, mm. Megan. When you realised that, what did you think? Of course it's disheartening. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a shame that that is the climate in this world to focus that much on that or that that would be discriminatory in that sense, but I think you know, at the end of the day, I'm really just proud of who I am and where I come from, and we have never put any focus on that. We've just mm. focused on who we are as a couple. And so when you take all those extra layers away and all of that noise, um, I think it makes it really easy to just enjoy being together and mm. tune all the rest of that out. All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, welcome once more to another video podcast on the PNT Live Network. And remember, you can always check out the archives and um, any follow-up details that you might not have caught in this particular podcast over on pntlive.net. Now, um, I didn't complete a reading a little bit earlier about the situation revolving around a young actress known as Shay Evans because my battery on my iPad ran out and also I was getting a little bit emotional. But I'm going to finish it up right now. And um, before I do, when I repost this podcast in the beginning, I'm going to include a clip of Meghan Markle discussing um, some issues in regards to bullying that appear to be rooted within the fact that she's multiracial. Because what Shay Evans has dealt with, not only in regards to, at least from my perspective, her having been sex trafficked, but when I look at the level of racism that she has endured, which is rooted within the organized crime element of the adult entertainment industry, it's hard for me to even wrap my mind around because we are entering the year 2020 in just a couple of weeks. In just a few weeks, we're going to be in 2020. And in no way in America, being that slavery ended in America over a century ago, soon, almost two centuries ago, being that that's so, so in the past, you would never think that today black women and black men or multiracial men and women, young, old, middle-aged, st would still be contending with so much racism. You know, um, Gabrielle Union actually just posted an excellent article. And if you follow me on Twitter at Alex Mayers Live, you'll find a link to it. But... She said it right. She said it right. This particular article um, is titled, Gabrielle Union, Don't Be the Happy Negro That Does the Bidding of the Status Quo. She had to say it that way at a recent speaking engagement that she had. Because for her to have been let go, supposedly in part, at least officially in part, from America's Got Talent as a judge simply due to how she opts to wear her hair as beautiful of a woman as she is as accomplished of a woman as gabrielle union is that's how they were trying to dominate her by controlling how she wore her hair so if you are a person of color especially if you are an african-american woman at this stage in the game When it comes to any white motherfucker who tries to mess with you, just tell them to go to hell. And if need be, build themselves a time machine to go back to the pre-Civil War American era. Because that's where trash belongs. And that's where a lot of people who think this little racism crap is cute are going. And just so you guys know, um, coming up, I'm going to start talking about that Michelle LeBlanc of the Free Speech Coalition because she needs to check herself before she tweets people who are enabling stuff like what I'm going to continue reading about today. Just to recap, <clears throat> and this is where Shay Evans is discussing um, 
the horrific abuse that she suffered at the hands of what appears to be a Caucasian American sex trafficker. On two Sundays, he set up a football Sunday and invited men to a hotel room to have sex with me while football played in the background. He texted me instructions about what to do with the men, who I later learned he was charging to come in the room. One Sunday on January 24th, 2016, I started pushing back. In other words, you started fighting back against this man who presented himself as someone who loved her, who was into swinging. And just so y'all know, a lot of times when a guy says he's a swinger, he's actually a pimp. She's starting to wake up in this paragraph to, hey, this isn't right. This isn't the kind of life I want to lead. So she's, you know, fighting back because she was sore. She was in pain. She didn't want to have sex with these guys. So here's what he did. He got really angry with me and we had a fight via text messages. Every time he would twist things around, typical MPD, narcissistic personality disorder abuse tactic, I would feel guilty and apologize for not making him happy by having sex with random men, even when I didn't want to or was sore or tired. This is how broken down he managed to get this girl, okay? He even set up sexual encounters for me when we traveled to Texas for my work. He sent me to a hotel to have sex with someone and directed me via text from the lobby while he listened in. He tried to do the same in Vegas, but it fell through and he was mad that I did not actively search out a replacement. Essentially, every time we went out at night, it was so he could find someone for me to have sex with or take me to a previously arranged place to have sex with someone he had already contacted. So he was adamantly pimping her at this stage, you know, and she thought that still she was just finding a guy to sleep with, to turn her husband on because for some reason she thought that was normal. And again, I think it was because she was raised in a very sheltered environment and she was very naive. I went to my doctor for a note to try to convince him that I could not perform as often as he wanted, but that did not make him ease up on me. It's hard to explain why I didn't just leave him, but by then he controlled my entire life and I was afraid to make him unhappy. I was committed to making the relationship work and was afraid to leave it. And also keep in mind, um, she was having, she was scared that her parents would find out. But what I don't think Shay realizes, maybe she will if she ever watches this podcast, because keep in mind, I've never spoken to her. I just sent like a couple tweets to her and that's it. She was trauma bonded to this guy. A lot of times this happens to abuse victims. They start to identify with and even empathize with their abuser. It is not her fault, it is his fault. And again, if anyone out there knows this individual's name and identity, I am very curious as to who it is. You can always email me. My email address is listed on alexandramayers.com. One night in February of 2016, Tristan wanted me to find two guys at a bar to sleep with and have oral sex with at the bar. I tried for a little while, but then I texted Tristan that I wanted to be with him that night. He got really upset and we went home. In return for agreeing to let me come home, he forced me to perform oral sex that night even though I told him I didn't want to. After a little while, I stopped, which made him so mad because I hadn't given oral sex to the men in the bar like he wanted and now I wasn't satisfying him. On February 21st of 2016, we went again to a club and I was supposed to find two guys to have sex with. I walked away with one guy and he got really mad and told me to go to the bathroom. See attached text messages. He called me while I was in there and started screaming at me. I went out to his car and he was screaming and calling me names and accusing me of messing up his night and not making him happy. By this time, I knew I had to find my way out of this relationship. 
even though we had just gotten married. Ugh. It really is amazing how life can produce two people who um, physically look so similar to each other, but their outcomes can be so different. This girl, Shay Evans, actually reminds me a lot physically of Meghan Markle. There's actually quite a few girls right now in the entertainment industry who um, favor Miss Markle. You know, probably because that look is in demand. You know, she is a, um, a duchess over in the UK, meaning Markle. But um, even Markle has dealt with racism. But when I look at how beautiful of a girl this girl Shay Evans is, she really is just as beautiful as Meghan Markle. But for her to think that she deserves to be treated like this, like what I'm sharing with all of you. These are her words. By some guy, she thinks that she deserves to be treated that way. That's why I want everyone listening to this podcast to follow her Twitter, be her friend, send her words of positivity because her self-esteem needs to be a lot higher. How she feels about on the in, about herself on the inside needs to match how beautiful she is on the outside. I actually think that if she felt better about herself, she would be even more beautiful than she already is. So, um, you know, that's just how I feel. It's her life. She can do whatever she wants. I'm not going to judge. We all do different things. Different things are right for us. But, um... A guy like this piece of crap that she was involved with, he could have killed her. And because I suspect he's enabled by white privilege, I think he could have gone away with it. I actually think that there's a lot of people who are enabled by white privilege who have gone away with murdering people of color. I really do. Okay, physical abuse. Due to the pending criminal case against me, I have been advised to refrain from providing any detail regarding the incidents of physical abuse described in Tristan's restraining order application. I can say that Tristan was physically abusive toward me during our relationship, that I defended myself, that he recorded me defending myself, and that he has twisted the story to make me look like the aggressor. Once the criminal case is resolved, I will be happy to provide detail as to what really happened. Fair enough. Um, this is a very small girl, by the way. And never should any male on this planet lay his hands upon a woman. Ever. Psychiatric abuse. During our relationship, he placed me on a 5150 psychiatric hold three times. I was never able to explain what was happening to the doctors because he always called ahead and told them a whole story about what was happening, and I knew no one would believe me because I was supposed to be the one who needed help. At a later follow-up appointment, he spoke to the psychiatrist instead of me because he threatened me on the way in that if I don't say the right thing, there would be consequences. He told the doctor that I was bipolar and needed medication, and based on Tristan's threats, when the doctor asked if I agreed, I said yes. I was never able to talk to the doctor alone. I almost wonder if um, some of these medical professionals were in on the trafficking of this young woman, because keep in mind, all of this took place in the California area in the vicinity of Porn Valley. In other words, the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles area. I think that there is a strategic agenda out there to sex traffic young girls, specifically women of color, and someone's going to have to do something about it. By the end of January of 2016, I had signed a medical power of attorney, which he used to control my medical decisions. I still can't believe I did it. It gave him total control. The next time I didn't do what he wanted, he used it against me. 
Tristan told me that I had to be crazy if I was disobeying him. And he brought me in on another 5150 by telling the hospital that I was suicidal. There were times that I pretended I was going to kill myself just so he would leave me alone or let me go. I was so desperate. Tristan just used them against me and tried to make me look unstable, even though he himself has attempted and threatened suicide many times, which isn't surprising to me. Yeah, so um, that concludes the testimony in her own words when it comes to Shay Evans, currently known as the Gia Milano. Oh. The whole thing makes me so freaking sick. For so many reasons. But again, parents, protect your teen daughters. And if your teen daughters get wrapped up in the adult entertainment industry for whatever reason, allow them to come home. Any boyfriend who follows most likely is a pimp. So tell him to go to hell. And if he threatens you on your property and you happen to be a go gun owner, hopefully you live in a state where there's a stand your ground law. Yeah. These are really bad people. And it's not only young men doing this. There is a very sophisticated network of people who basically have the qualifications to work in mainstream America, but who are greedy and have chosen to work with an organized crime instead, who are facilitating and enabling the sex trafficking of America's daughters. Not just young girls of color, many white women too. A woman who substantially changed my life, known as Shelley Lubin, was a sex trafficking victim. She was stalked till the day she and her daughter died by the adult entertainment industry. And though I cannot go into detail about a little something I know, I happen to be aware of the fact that one of the men who stalked Shelley Lubin, aka Shelley Moore, till the day that she and her daughter died, has also been attempting to intimidate Shay Evans. That man is known as Michael Whiteacre. I personally do not want Michael Whiteacre to ever be brought into court because I think that he needs to be dealt with outside of court. So that's all for this particular podcast. Thank you everyone for watching and listening. There will be many podcasts this week. Um, I am specifically focusing on the issue of racism and discrimination this week. The next adult industry performer who I focus on, I think is going to be Xander Corvus, considering a little something that I've noticed revolving around him. Um, I'll leave it at that. So thank you everyone for watching. I will see you later. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Alex Mayers Live. Bye-bye.